This week, Sarah took away my project privileges and built something for herself. I did do that. This week, I built a serving tray. Plus, we get to meet a new maker and we'll share a few of our favorite maker videos of the week. But first, it's time for our maker break. Welcome back guys, I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and this week Rob took a break from building so I could make a simple serving tray that turned out way better than I thought it would. I ran across this adorable serving tray over on the blog at Crafted by the Hunts, and I knew immediately that I wanted to make one. To get started, I had to cut the base out of quarter inch plywood. I'm still getting comfortable with our table saw and the piece I started with was pretty big, so I asked Rob to make the cut for me and because I'm the real boss around here, he said yes. Next I grabbed some pine in quarter inch thick and four inch wide strips. I measured out two foot pieces and cut them on the miter saw. Next I cut those in half at a 45 degree angle. This gave me 12 pieces that I need to make up the herringbone pattern. I then found the center of the plywood base and marked it. Then it was time to sand. Do I look excited? I'm faking it. Sanding sucks, but hey, somebody's gotta do it. I sanded each piece and then laid them out to find out which pattern I liked. Then it was gluing time. This part I do love, and not just because you get to pick the dry glue from your fingers later. I smeared it all over each piece and then placed them on the base. Now the instructions said to put them all in place and then put something heavy on top of them, so I did. That was not enough, and while I don't show it here, I ended up clamping it down with a ton of clamps. When it was dry, I flipped it over and put some painter's tape down to reduce tear out and to give me a better visual line for cutting off the waste. I was excited to use the circular saw again, which did a great job of giving me a clean straight edge. Now for the edge, I was using 1x2s, and Rob suggested I cut a rabbit into the bottom. I think he suggested it so he could use the router again, which I was happy to let him do. When he was done, I cut all four edge pieces to rough dimensions, measured where the miters would go, and then cut those on the miter saw. Next, it was time to apply the finish. I rolled out some paper and set up my pieces. I used some dark walnut wood stain, which I applied against the grain with a rag and then brushed off the excess along the grain. When it was all dry, I put the edge pieces together in a band clamp and glued them up. I then applied some wood glue to the rabbit and dropped in the base. It fit perfectly. Then I used a pin nailer to make sure it stayed in place while it dried. Finally, I screwed on some handles I found at Home Depot and that was it. I was done and look how pretty this turned out. Now I have to decide who gets it. So that kind of turned out beautiful. I know, right? <laughs> so is that going to be something that you keep for yourself or did you make that for somebody? Uh, that's for me, but do you know how you can tell? How? Well, if it turns out amazing, I'm going to keep it for myself. If it's not quite yeah. perfect, it's, it's gonna, a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for us to meet a maker. Who are we meeting this week? So today we get to meet Nicole from 1776 Faux Farmhouse. Hey, guys, it's Nicole from 1776 Faux Farmhouse. And along with my husband, we are customizing our builder grade home one project at a time. We are self-taught DIYers, but love to share our successes and our mistakes. You can find us on Instagram at 1776 Faux Farmhouse and on my blog at 1776fauxfarmhouse.com. The tool that is the most unsung hero of our projects is our sander. Not only is it quiet so that I can work on projects while my little one is asleep, but the hubster and I tend to make some mistakes that more often than not needs a heavy dose of wood filler and a good sanding job to achieve the even finish that we desire. The Hubster and I both agree that our favorite project of all time has been our office renovation. So when quarantine happened, the Hubster didn't have a designated space to conduct meetings. So I would have to take our little one and drive aimlessly around town so that his meetings could be uninterrupted. Do you know how hard that is with a toddler? Once we got the indefinite work from home orders, we made sure to make the office a space that could work for all of us. 
So we made sure to add a space for storage. We added two working desks for the Hubster and added a barn door from Artisan Hardware so that we could achieve the function that we so desperately needed, but we weren't sacrificing the beauty of our home. Another maker I love watching is my friend Whitney on Instagram at farmhouse underscore wit. She's a teacher like I was and knows how to make a huge statement, but on a budget. It's been fun to see how she's transformed her kitchen with just paint. So the Hubster and I are currently working on our lackluster of an entryway. And once that's completed, we will work on bringing a few more modern elements into our modern farmhouse home. Thanks for having me guys. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Nicole. All right, on to a few of our favorite maker videos of the week. First up, Andrew from Molly Wally Woodworking made this amazing white oak table with a stunning campfire steel base. So I've seen bases like that many times, never heard them called campfire, but that totally makes sense. Right. John Malucky continues his nonstop train of hyper creative epoxy builds with this amazing carved tree nightstand. I love how he actually dipped the legs in the epoxy, so when it dried, they showed up on the top. That's a super cool idea. And last of all, Rachel from Living to DIY shared this amazing fireplace makeover she did for a friend. And I have to tell you, it's amazing. And as always, Rachel makes you feel like you can do this too. All right, guys, so last week I built this crazy VR cockpit, which you can watch right here. Special thanks to Hart for reminding us that we can build anything we can imagine if we do it with Hart. All right, break's over. Let's make something.